optics burning essentials. Okay. It, it, it doesn't say on the wing. Okay, okay. All right, sorry. You have so many things, it's three many things. Enough for me. Yeah. Oh, Test one, two, three. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth in this time. It's all men.
Hey everybody, Kent Martz here. Scott, are you with us? Follow me on. Well, we're on. So we're just going to go on without him. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on the wing. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, new technology. I don't have a monitor to see what's up on the screen. So we're just going to do the best we can and go on down the road. So let's just jump on into it. We're going to be doing some game camera photos today that are coming to us from Mike Wiesner out in Oracle AZ, Arizona. We often get mail here in Springdale, Arkansas for Springdale AZ. Uh, I guess they don't realize there's no Z in Arkansas. Uh, exactly. Label for Springdale AZ. But we're AR for Arkansas. So, Paul, tell me when we got our first picture up. I have no idea what it looks like because I can't see it. Let me do something here. This is joyous with new technology. Uh, let's see. I might be able to get this way to get an idea of what's showing. The first picture up, or what do we got up, Paul? First picture up. If y'all hear a bunch of honking and horns, it's not my what brain. What is the horns from? It's not my brain. It's from a forklift driving around. We the tried to talk to Scott, but he's, I don't know if he's listening. By Scott. Or not. So <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Let's just roll on down the road. So we're looking at a Harris's Hawk by Mike Wiesner. This is a photo taken from a, I believe it's a real tree game camera uh, and I didn't just realized I didn't put the maps of the birds this is a bird of the southwest and Mexico down into Central America uh, and that's Okie Okie you can see that this bird is coming to a theater to land uh, in Mike's backyard uh, very cool picture of a bird let's talk about actually did you uh, send me Paul? the right PDF because it's not, what I've got, it's not matching up. It's the one I downloaded. All right. It's dated 4.21.22 on the wing. All right, we're going to open So you don't have it up yet? I, I know. I'm just talking to you. So, uh, anyway, I guess we're waiting to get... Hey, Scott, are you there? So, 
Pardon our stage reset, I, folks. I you're playing a video. So, uh, we're just going to do a little rearranging and see if we can get everything going here. <laughs> just it's, confuse us. That's why we shouldn't do this on a, on a spur. We should practice. <laughs> yeah, the one you sent me is the one with the eagle again. Is it the same one? That's the opening screen. It's been the opening screen okay. for 37 episodes. That is my fault. Yep. There we go. PowerPoint. So you guys hear me now? Oh, yes. If I can get these cords, I'm gonna have to reset the camera, Paul. Or Does Kent hear me? So we couldn't find a long HDMI cord, so the monitor is gonna be like right on top, top of me. So I'm not gonna. All I'm gonna see is my screen, right? You're gonna look at this for comments and stuff, and then I'll move the cameras for a sec. There you go, buddy. That's my screen. So what you can do... I don't have enough screen. No, what you can do, Ken, is get into the link. Like the Zoom I don't have enough screen to see my notes. That's true. Well, you can't use the screen. So let's just move back to where we were then. Okay, so anyway, Paul, might you have the PowerPoint up and running yet? I'll take that as a no. I've got it. All right, so uh, Mike Wiesner has a game camera set up outside of his house. Uh, actually, he's got a couple of game cameras set up outside of his house in a dry, dry northern uh, New Mexico, or excuse me, Arizona. And we're looking at a Harris's Hawk when it finally comes up. Uh, there we go. I think we have it up now on the screen. Awesome. <laughs> So a very cool picture of a Harris's hawk coming to land in front of a perch on okay. the uh, Mike's backyard. And as you can tell, there's no birds around because when a hawk comes through the buffet, all the birds do the old bird ski daddle and get out of there. So, Paul, wow. do you have that video awesome. with the sound that we're ready sound to run? The bird, the hawk? Yeah, the Harris's hawk. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Tell me when it's running. It is running. Okay. The really neat part about this is I can't hear it. <laughs> you should be able to hear it. There she goes. So it's a standard hawk sound. When you hear that, you know it's a hawk of some sort. And, you know, when you study, you can learn the differences in their raspy calls. Has it played? Yeah, it's playing. Okay. All right. So, Harris's hawks are large, lanky raptors. They have long legs and fairly long tails. They fly on broad, rounded wings. Females weigh nearly twice as much as the males. Uh, go to the next picture, Paul, would you please? Okay. And here is another picture of said hawk. And if you look at the date timestamp, they're both taken on the 19th, one at 4.56, and then one at 5.27. So it came back in for another pass through the Songbird Buffet. Uh, they're dark brown overall with reddish brown feathers on their wings and thighs, as we can see from this picture. The tail is mostly dark with with a white rump and white terminal bands, as we can sort of see here. Uh, from below, the inner wings are reddish brown. And immature birds show patches of white on the belly and wing. Uh, so there's no patches of white here. So this one is not an immature bird. And they have a narrow white band across the bottom of the tail. They have fine barring on the under wings and tail. We can see that fine barring right here in this picture. Uh, very, very well. The Harris hawk occurs in semi-open desert lowlands uh, found among, among mesquite and palo verde, sulgaro and orbit Oregon pipe cactus. Uh, and they also frequent urban and suburban areas because these offer these areas, Paul, offer access to what? Huh? I'm I'm busy. Oh, uh, sorry. Not, uh, okay. 
trying to get you involved in the discussion. They like urban areas because they have easy access to water. And what, what else do raptors like? Food. Specifically, urban areas have pigeons, and Harris's hawks love themselves some pigeons. So that is the Harris's hawk from Mike Wiesner's game camera in beautiful, arid Oracle, Arizona, where, by the way, we're going to have the Arizona Dark Sky Star Party. Uh, I believe it's September 21 through 26 or something like that. Uh, details are up, and uh, uh, we're going to be have, using the Biosphere as a hotel. We're going to have some really cool programming. Details are getting worked out now, but that's coming in September. If you're interested, get it on the calendar and reach out to us through uh, Explore Alliance at explorescientific.com, and we'll get you more details uh, to it. So, um, Paul, go on to the next slide. So, Paul, you got the next slide ready to go? We're on the flicker now. It goes from top to bottom. I, but I don't, they're not numbered. They're top to bottom. <laughs> we go the first bird. Is that the one you want? Can't... I can't see it. I, are we on the flicker? Okay, we're on the flicker, the beautiful flicker, which apparently you've been looking at before, potentially. Uh, so... The northern flicker, this was taken uh, as well in Mike's backyard with a game camera. I think he's cropped in on a little bit to make it more pretty. This bird is a foot long, which puts it between the size of a robin and a crow. This is a really cool picture. You don't see pictures of birds like this very often. Uh, let's go ahead and play the sound for the flicker. Not sure I have that one loaded. I've got this one. What is this? Yeah, there's a woodpecker. Uh, let's see. Is it the previous video? No. I emailed it to you. It says right. Northern I think Flicker. The link got messed up because it's, that's the link. Okay, so the Northern Flicker is a brownish bird overall with a white rump patch that is conspicuous in flight and often visible when perched. Well. In flight, we can see that rump patch really well in this picture. Uh, the undersides of the wings and tail feathers are bright yellow uh, for eastern birds and red in western birds. So we're going to talk about which kind of bird this is here in a minute. we got another picture that we'll look at. Uh, with a close look, you'll see the brown plumage is richly patterned with black spots, bars, and crescents, which you can see here now. Paul, go to the next picture, please. Is it the wings of part? Which one is it? The, it's the next picture. Five? It's the next. If you're on three, it's the next picture. Okay. I'm on four. I go I'm in order. There, yeah. Huh? Okay. Yes. Just tell me which picture you need me to select. Uh, it's going to be it. five. Five. That's what I thought. Okay. It's the next picture. Okay. So North Americans had North America has two easily distinguished races of northern flickers. The yellow shafted form of the eastern United States, which occurs, or, or excuse me, not the eastern United States, the eastern part of its range, which occurs in Texas and the Great Plains, and the red shafted form of the west. So what are the differences? The key differences are the color of the flight feather shafts, which are either lemon yellow or rosy red. Obviously, we can't see this flight feather shafts, so we have to go a different route. Yellow shafted forms have tan face, faces and gray crowns and a red crescent on the nape. And males have a black mustache stripe. The red shafted form has a gray face, a brown crown and no nape crescent with males showing a red mustache stripe. Okay, so... I think hybrids look intermediate and are common at the edges of the two groups. Okay, I've gone back and forth with what this one is. 
it has a red mustache stripe and a black crescent on the uh, um, uh, nape of the neck. I'm going to go with either a hybrid or a red shafted form on this one. Not sure. Uh, the northern flicker is a woodpecker, and as such, it can climb tree trunks and hammer on wood like other woodpeckers do. However, the northern flicker prefers to find its food on the ground, specifically ants. Ants serve as the main source of food, uh, which the flicker digs from the dirt. It uses its long barbed tongue to lap up the ants, and uh, when it gets into an ant colony, it just gorges on the feast of ants. Uh, when these birds perch in trees, they're often perched upright or on upright on horizontal branches instead of leaning against their tails on a trunk like most other woodpeckers do. Uh, they fly in an up and down path using heavy flaps interspersed with glides, uh, the same flight pattern as other woodpeckers have. You look for flickers in open habitats near trees, including woodlands, edges, yards, and parks. In the west, you can find them in the mountain forest all the way up to the top of the tree line, so altitude does not bother them. Uh, these birds are cavity nesters, so if you put up the appropriate nest boxes uh, that are up well before nesting season starts, you may attract these birds to nest in your yard. Uh, they generally do not visit feeders. And like most woodpeckers, northern flickers like to drum on objects to form as a form of communication and territorial defense. Uh, they search for objects to make as loud as noise as possible. And that's why northern flickers prefer to use metal objects. I've seen them use uh, vent pipes on houses like uh, for toilets and sinks. I've seen them use drain pipes. And there's documentation of a northern flicker in Wyoming who could be heard, heard drumming on an abandoned tractor a half a mile away. So this is the northern flicker. So Paul, go to the next page as well. It's the next picture. If you just hit arrow forward, that'll be the one. Uh, so we're looking at another nor northern flicker from a different angle. Just a spectacular picture with that, the wings up and the reddish hue on them. Uh, the white rump patch, just a fantastic colored bird in flight and a picture you don't no see. This is the spectacular northern flicker from Oracle, Arizona. Now then, Paul, go to slide seven, would you? Are we, are we on the, the swan goose? Okay, since this is embedded video, you can't play that embedded video, so you don't have the sound from this particular, particular video that Scott took. But why don't you go ahead and play the video, Paul, for us so we can watch it and not hear it. Shall you do that? We can't hear the sound, but we can sure you see it. So, and go what? Play the video on the PowerPoint. Can we play the video on the PowerPoint? Okay, so you're hearing the sound of the goose right now, which is also known as the Chinese goose. So uh, this is a bird that lives uh, in a pond. It's the one I wanted. That's a bird that lives close to Scott's apartment, and they're out feeding it, um, I believe, bread. And uh, it is very territorial, and if you're not feeding it, it wants you to feed it. And if you don't feed it, it hisses and honks and tries to drive you away. 
That's because of the nature of the swan goose slash Chinese goose. So swan geese are large slender neck goose typically found in inland areas, expensive in fields and lakes. Uh, they, gather, they gather in large flocks during migration and winter grounds, and this is in Asia generally, uh, mixing with other uh, waterfowl. The bicolored head and neck, dark brown above and tan below, distinguish it. Uh, dom the domestic form, called the Chinese goose, which is what we're looking at here, vary in plumage from all white to mottled brown, and most have large bulbs above the bill that is not found in wild birds, and the domestic version has stockier bodies. These have been domesticated for about 3,000 years. Uh, this is a hybrid of some measure. Uh, hard to say what it's for. There's all sorts of varieties out there because this goose can hybridize very easily. Uh, oftentimes you see the Chinese goose is a white bird with a really uh, large bulb uh, on its top of its bill. This bulb is not well developed, indicating that it is either a juvenile or a female. So there you go. All right. Uh, the Chinese are one of those popular, well-known breeds of domestic goose. Unofficially, there are two kinds of Chinese geese. Those, this is from a source I found online. Those that hate the world and everything that moves within it and those which have to be picked up and carried to their shed. Uh, they are so tame that they prefer to stand around your feet and won't be driven anywhere. Uh, how, where you depend up on depends somewhat on the strain if you have these geese, but mainly on how you rear them and treat them. Uh, they're wonderful watchdogs, uh, tame and real pets with their owners, but are vo very noisy when anything unusual is around or enters their domain. Again, I have seen Chinese geese that are of the first variety. They hate everything within sight that moves and they will attack it uh, happily as well. So uh, these geese are often some of the most common domestic waterfowl and for good reason. They're great for laying eggs, they're lawn mowers, and they produce a lot of meat for the big heavy bodied birds uh, because they're a domesticated bird, that's what they do. So uh, birds can lay up to 80 eggs a year, uh, which is a bunch for a goose. Uh, not so much for a chicken, but for a goose, that's a bunch. And again, they are fantastic lawnmowers because geese are effectively like cattle. Uh, they graze. They're ground grazers. So uh, that's the end of that. Did, okay. Paul, did we end up showing the Harris's hawk or not? The first picture. Yes. Was I talking about it when the flicker was up? Yeah, yeah, because I couldn't tell the difference between the two birds. Okay, so I okay, all right. So let's go on to the slide number eight. You there? Okay, what, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the front door of Explore. That's the sign above the front door of the Explore Scientific. And you look over there in the bottom left-hand corner, and there's a little brown ball of something. What is it? Go to the next slide. I couldn't identify it. I think it's either an, I put India India bat. It's an, either an Indiana bat or a big brown bat. Uh, we had a bad rainstorm last week. I mean, it was coming down. Fire hoses, 55-gallon buckets, just deluge. And I suspect this bat had roosted somewhere and got driven uh, from its roost, and it landed somewhere dry and hung out there until nightfall and then went about its business being a insect uh, flying, insect-eating flying mammal. It was great fun, Paul, to watch the ladies out front when they'd see it. They would scream and get all scared, and I'd say, "What no, do you think it's going to no, get here?" That, not, that's not that's necessarily, not necessarily true. true. They did. 
What's well, not true? They did that. Yeah, I don't they think all... they got scared and screamed. Oh, you didn't see Joanne and Tammy? Oh, they were just having a fit because there was a bat fifteen feet away from the door. <laughs> they didn't like it, not one little bit. So, I offered to, to to get a pair of gloves and a ladder and pick it up and set it under their desk so they could keep it warm under the heater. They didn't like that idea too much either. Uh, so I couldn't really identify this bat, but thought it was an interesting flying bird for on the wing because they do have wings. They're just not birds. They're mammals. So uh, hopefully there was not a breeding colony somewhere that got rained out and maybe decimated because bats in all areas of the country are endangered species and due to habitat loss and everything else. Although many buildings do provide uh, roost sites for them, that also creates conflict with uh, uh, people as well. So I have reached the end of the PowerPoint and I cannot do any shout outs from anybody, Paul. Yeah, can I, got, I, I can look out? at the comments. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, do, 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 do. Well, maybe I can. <laughs> I was in such a hurry. We, we set up way too quickly for this. Like two minutes. Uh, I wish I could identify that bat, bat better, but I looked at it, all the pictures of the species in Arkansas. And it was either an Indiana bat or a big brown bat. Um, you know. Right. One or the other. Bats are cool. You know, yeah, people are scared of them. The... You know, but uh, when they fly See. by you, Paul, you know what they're doing? There's... there's... They're uh, looking for lunch. That's that's a, oh, it's either breakfast, lunch, or supper, one or the other, <laughs> depending on the time of the night. But yeah, they're just coming by you because you attracted bugs, and you know people, that, you know women, you know you hear about people getting them stuck in their hair. Well, that's because they're flying close to you, getting mosquitoes, getting ready to get you, and they get hung in your hair. Right. Right. Yep. And that would be a scary thing, but. You know, I don't have to worry about that, do I? I guess they get hung in my Wilford Brimley, but they can't get stuck in my hair. <laughs> Wilford so, Brimley? Yep, my Wilford Brimley. So, so, what you got, Paul? I'm still trying to. I have to be quiet because I can't get the microphones to stop hearing me whenever I talk. Because we're in the same room, basically. We are indeed. So, while we're doing this, hey, if any of you out there watching, you know, we love to use reader submitted photos. And uh, I want to go ahead and get Scott's and my photos in so he didn't take time away from other people's uh, submissions. Easy to send us uh, your pictures. Send them to Explore Alliance at ExploreScientific.com. Paul, if you can ever figure out how to get the chat function up, we'll right. be happy, I'm sure, to put that email address in the, in the, in the comments section so that you can see it for sure. But it's Explore Alliance at Explore Scientific. So I was going to talk to Scott again. We but... welcome we welcome for those submissions it's... from our readers. When you send those in, please tell us where and when you took them as well so I can uh, help it make sure I get a correct identification because location is often a very important uh, distinguisher between some species of birds that look very much alike and you can't tell except one species is nowhere close to where you took those photos. So we would appreciate uh, that very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. What you got, Paul? So I was going to talk to Scott a little bit, but he... Uh, I think he had something to do. I don't know. You know so this guy. Try to talk to him, you know? So what you got? Any chats up yet? So Harold Locke says, thanks, Mike, W, uh, Scott, and Kent for sharing. You know, it's very interesting to see those game camera photos of birds. You generally don't see a lot of those. And he got some really spectacular pictures, especially of that northern flicker. That northern flicker is just beautiful. Yeah? yeah. So the northern flicker. So was that the woodpecker? Yes, northern okay, flicker so, is a woodpecker. So someone was over my shoulder at the time that I was, I had the woodpecker video. And they said, no, that's a woodpecker. That's not. And I'm like, well, that's the link. And so yeah, I think if you want to see that woodpecker. Fusion, the, we had the hawk up and then the flicker, and yeah, I don't, not sure because I can't see anything. I have no it idea should, what's up on the screen. You should be right able now. to see the, what's going on on the screen on your Which end. Screen? Paul, there's nothing on the monitor. 
Right. It's, it's a right. setting that you, you play around with the settings. It's blank. Okay. I was playing around with it earlier, and I could watch what was going on, interestingly enough. So just it got set up in a hurry, and that's all. We got it. You can't be so quick. We have to be here. But here's the uh, the woodpecker. You said you wanted the woodpecker sound, right? If I had the, this is the nor northern well, we didn't flicker. Didn't play it. Did you have to play it? Knock it on that uh, drumming. Yeah, the the birdhouse. There he goes. He's, he's. It sounds like he's laughing. A very cool call. Or, you know, drumming is a is a mating and territorial sort of uh, dominant sort of thing. Now where are, cool these at? Birds. where are these birds normally found? Uh. Southern United States. I forgot to attach my maps. <laughs> Realized that when I got here. Well, yeah, we uh, were all flicker, in a hurry today. So. The, the, the flicker is uh, uh, all over the United States. Breeds up into Canada, the lower uh, the lower provinces of Canada, all the way across uh, from the Atlantic coast to Pacific coast. Uh, they are migratory that far north. Uh, they're one of the few woodpeckers that are uh, migratory, so those birds in the northern ranges do come farther south. Unlike most woodpeckers who just hang around all winter wherever they call home home. Uh, so. so, James Dugan says, I like birds. I feed kookaburras and rainbow lorikeets. I have Laura videos Keats, yes. of it on the screen name on YouTube. Mr. Dugan, we would love to see your kookaburras and Laura Keats from the land down under. Uh, that would be awesome to let us see those. Send us those videos, please, or send me a link so I can download them. I'd love to have them and talk about The original about video would be great. The Laura Keats and the Kookaburras because we all know the song. Paul, sing it with me. No. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Oh there we go. Gosh. Yep. Tariq says, so where is the telescope as you mentioned in the title, Bird Watching Through a Telescope? Uh... Well, that wasn't well, for this show, but yeah, we can, yeah. social media we can talk update. about it. Okay, so I've um, got those pics we, still. Can't we can't switch to the other set because we have to move all the lights and everything. Okay, so. You can. you got a telescope right behind you. Yeah, but I don't have the camera or the adapter or the adapter. Uh, I could bring so them to you, you if you ask. We have. Paul, go ahead and bring up those pictures <laughs> of Sheldon's. All right. Let's see. And let's show those pictures of Sheldon's that Sheldon Farsky took with a Explore Scientific ED-102, so, uh, so F7 telescope. I've got and, uh, the basically MD you just use, CJ Finn. Yeah, those. Uh, let's see, Merch. The Dove. So tell me what you've got. That's the Dove. Because I can't say. Okay. Uh, the morning dove, that blue eye ring is just spectacular. And look at the details in it. I can't see the picture, but by golly, I want you to look at the details in the feathers. Uh, the coloration is just spectacular on this bird. Uh, they're subdued colors because, uh, it looks like it was taken on a cold winter's day. Most oh, yeah. all these pictures were, I believe, potentially snow on the ground, uh, in Illinois, I think is where Sheldon lives and what are we looking at now um we are now looking at the it is called the male red-bellied woodpecker red-bellied woodpecker look at that thing and the detail that he got using a telescope look at the tongue you can see the little barbs on the tongue that the bird uses to capture insects with just an amazingly sharp, crisp photo. 
So how Sheldon does this, he attaches his camera uh, with a what's called a T-ring and then a, a barrel adapter that you screw the T-ring on and the T-ring goes in the telescope just like uh, you put an eyepiece in the telescope and now you've turned your telescope into a camera lens. Um, you use it for astrophotography, you do the exact same thing except that you're shooting birds. How Sheldon does this, you can go on to another picture, Paul. How Sheldon does this is he looks for where birds are always landing or he creates perches that they prefer by trimming sticks and branches back and creates ways, uh, places where he can simply point the camera, pre-focus it exactly where he wants to, and with a little bit of math, he can calculate what his depth of field is going to be so he knows where to to focus it based on whether it's an inch or two inches or three inches or a quarter of an inch, if you will. And he decides where to put the cam focus the camera and then waits for a bird to fly by and here's land. And when there's beautiful a, here's a starling. starling. I never would have thought I would say this before, but when I saw this picture of this starling, I never thought of starlings as being beautiful. But that, folks, is a beautiful starling in its winter plumage where it gets these beautiful white dots on the tip of each feather. Just a beautiful bird. I'm still not sorry for all the bad things I've said about starlings, but that may be the only redeeming value of a starling, <laughs> which is an invasive species in the United States. So, uh, and now, he manages... for the one I like, I like the Oriole. Yeah, the Oriole is just beautiful. Just the coloration and look at him just, just, you can just hear that song coming out of him. Just amazing, uh, beautiful picture. But he gets those pictures. He waits for birds to get there, and he's, he uses a remote shorter, shutter and goes. Now then, because the telescope has a fixed f-stop, in this case an f7, all he can do is manipulate his uh, ISO, which is still hard for me for hard for me to say because I'm so used to saying ASA through most of my childhood and much of my adulthood even. Uh, but the ISO and shutter speed, you know, typically you're going to be wanting to shoot at 1 25th of a second. Uh, you could use your camera button trigger for it. However, your audio died. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. I rubbed my hand across it. I must have very sensitive mute. So, you know, you can manipulate your ISO and your shutter speed. You want to be using at least one twenty-fifth of a second, uh, and faster is always better. Uh, the big beak. Because, you know, you want to stop movement. Is that the hummingbird? No, it's the big beak. Oh, it's the, it's the rose-breasted gross beak. And Paul was like, why, why would it be so mean and name it a gross beak? It's because <laughs> it's French. It's like, uh, it means a big, gross beak. It's a big beak, big, big, heavy beak on it. And uh, how about the hummingbird photo? This hummingbird, oh, hummingbird photo. Yeah. This hummingbird photo is photo. Photo. This hummingbird photo is awesome. The detail, the coloration, the sharpness. You know, and obviously Tariq says that he really w wishes that he could shoot, shoot the take photos of birds, and I don't see what's stopping him. Uh, if you got, I, I don't I can't remember if Tariq has a telescope or not. I think Tariq has some telescopes. Yeah, Tariq, you've got some telescopes. You know, um, he Tariq lives in the UAE, uh, and I, you know, there's, there's shore birds. birds there. There's got to be some birds there. I mean, there's uh, birds everywhere except in the you know, the, the empty quarter of, of Saudi Arabia and where there's nothing out there. Well, there's two things. <laughs> Diddly and oil. squat. Diddly and oil squat. No, there's not even oil out there, I don't think. They've the got, quarter, now, there's not much. There's a screensaver on my Apple TV that is of the uh, UAE, and it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, every shoreline is beautiful. I mean, you put ocean and sand, it's just beautiful. You know, it's just it just lends itself to just natural beauty. And right here is sure. your so, hummingbird. 
Yep, there's the hummingbird. So anyway, you uh, use your camera uh, attached to your telescope, and you pre the easiest way to do this is not try to follow it and focus as you go. It's almost impossible to do because uh, your autofocus is not going to work. So you're going to have to pre-focus. There's a red-headed woodpecker. Uh, and notice that all these pictures, except the hummingbird, the bird was perched on something. And I'll take this time. If you want woodpeckers, uh, especially uh, bald-headed, bald-headed, red-headed woodpeckers bald -headed red and other bald-headed woodpeckers, kin to the red-headed eagle, <laughs> which is a, like a rented mule. Uh, so uh, if you want to have woodpeckers, uh, woodpeckers are in decline in the United States and most other areas because of the propensity to eliminate standing dead timber. Well, if you want to have red-headed woodpeckers and downy woodpeckers and all the other kind of woodpeckers out yeah. there, you have to have standing dead timber for them to thrive on uh, and nest in. They're cavity nesters, and they need cavities to nest in, and those come from standing dead timber. So, this so that's, my, that's my environmental plea for the moment. CWW? Um, yes. It's a little gray bird. Cedar wax wing. Notice, oh. see the red, see the red wax on the tips of waxy secretions on the tips of those wings. That's cool. Yep, cedar wax wings. Beautiful birds. Uh, I always think of them as like a robber bird or almost because they have that black mask. Uh, they travel in flocks. Love to feast on berries, specifically the namesake cedar trees. They love junipers. They love to feed on cedar berries and other fruiting bodies. In the winter, they come through in giant flocks of dozens to hundreds. Uh, they have a very, very high-pitched, almost out of the hearing range whistle. And once you hear them, you know what they are. Um, a spectacular bird under bright sunlight. They are uh, a golden uh, hue. Just a spectacular bird as well. So, so there's I believe the, that picture. Here's the one with the stuff in his mouth. Uh, is that the Carolina Wren? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a Carolina Wren. And if you look closely, Paul, I think you can zoom in on it. I've got a picture uh, of a Carolina Wren that I took uh, two years ago. It's actually yeah, pretty cool. And if you look in the mouth of that bird, uh, wrens are insect eaters, and they love to eat spiders and other insects. It looks like it has a piece of spider web hanging from its bill. Uh, yeah, we're from a, a recent decent close picture of them. Meal it had. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, uh, telescopes make great camera lenses for things like this. Uh, the reason they're not used more is because you don't have autofocus and don't have uh, auto exposure. You can't just set the camera to go and just fire away. Uh, it's very much a fixed proposition. Right. Uh, my, my recommendation would be to use something like uh, the Twilight One mount. Uh, it is a, uh, holds up to 16 pounds rated at, uh, has slow motion azimuth and slow motion altitude control. So it's a standard, like a standard left, light, left, right tripod. However, it's got slow motion control, so you can fine tune it and point it very precisely at what you want to point at uh, as well. So, so here's uh, the, yes. the, what you say is the bird that turned people into bird watchers. The bird that turns people into bird watchers, the northern, in the United States anyway, North America, yeah. the northern cardinal a spectacular red bird is a bird that is said by many people to be the bird that causes more people to enter bird watching than anything else the female is a beautiful bird unto herself many female birds are just drab plain brown birds with maybe a little bit of character to them uh, but the female cardinal is a uh, a brownish bird with beautiful red highlights uh, shaped just like if, the male is shaped. Of course, this is the male. That's the male. Oftentimes sings more songs and more complicated songs than the male does. That is the beautiful. 
Northern Cardinal. And notice again, once again, if you start looking at that branch, you can see where Sheldon has nipped off um, uh, other branches to create an unobstructed view and an inviting place where the birds can land. He attracts them. These are, these are birds taken outside of his yard or his house uh, as they're coming to uh, bird feeders to now, feed. The last shot is of, I think, the woodpecker with his wings out, right? Uh, I think it's a downy woodpecker. What does it say? Um, What's it? MRBWP. M, male, red-bellied woodpecker. RB, okay, red-bellied yeah. woodpecker. So that's a male red-bellied woodpecker. It's got its weeks, wings out fluttering. I don't know. My guess is it just landed or was landing. Uh, I've wondered about how he got he that picture. He looks like what it was it's... Doing. Um, Looking back going, yeah, buddy, you really think you're so important. <laughs> Actually, Paul, how Sh Sheldon pays these birds $5 and right. a modeling fee, and that's how he gets them to pose so well, is with that $5 modeling fee. Not really. He doesn't pay the birds $5. He pays them uh, in food and a habitat, which if you want to attract birds, that's the way to do it. Food and habitat will win birds every single time. I've said this before. If you want to have birds in your yard, you have to have the things that birds need, and that's food and habitat. And if you don't, if you spray your yard with chemicals that kill more than 100 kinds of bird, uh, bugs in your yard, huh. well, all those birds that you want to have like to eat those 100 kinds of bugs in your yard. And if you kill those bugs... You're not going to have any birds because where well, there's no food, you're it's not going to get birds. It's the PowerPoint that threw me. So we got a comment. It's like looks like the video guy's got a handle. It's the PowerPoint. It doesn't. I don't know how to run PowerPoint. Yeah, there's this thing called the the forward button, the right button. That's it doesn't it work is. that way. If you see what I'm dealing with. Yep. So maybe you need to play with it over the course of next week, and we get this solved. We're gonna work on that. Super busy. <laughs> yep. Scott's oh, laughing gosh. at me, so he's in here. He's I can see here. him. Yeah. <laughs> he's still on the, he's call. Still on the call. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. How's things How's going things over, there? over there? Huh? I don't think that Kent can hear me though. Yeah. Yeah. He should be able, should to. Be able to. Can you not get the can sound? Get the sound? Kent? No, and I hear All an echo. All just turned off. There's no HDMI cord, no sound for Kent. Why is there, Why no, is there no HDMI cord? And we're getting an echo. Because there's not one. Yeah, we're picking up we're your picking speakers, up your Scott, so that's okay. That's what's happening. So, Scott, tell us about that uh, Chinese goose slash swan goose encounter you had. Okay. Well, mean bugger, wasn't it? This this goose uh, lives in a pond uh, that's right behind my apartment, and uh, um, he, I never see him flying, never. Okay, and he's always there. He, he was there all winter long. All that does. Uh, he was there during the summertime, and uh, so I mean, not the summertime, but <laughs> now in the springtime. Uh, I can tell you, he likes. He likes bagels a lot, you know, because I, I give him a bagel every once in a while. So we'll fix this. I see what happened. There's operator error on the back end of this, and uh, it's it'll get fixed. <laughs> Let's hope so. This is always fun. It's a new adventure every day. I assume Scott's not talking now. Yeah, that's some beautiful beautiful birds. That's true. Yeah, the birds were very beautiful and. Uh, uh, we will get we will get Kent stuff fixed for him for the next show. Uh, I don't. It's it's a simple fix now that I was able to get up and go over there. Anyway, you want to lead us out? Kent? Uh, is Scott talking? No. No. Okay. Hey, Scott. Uh, thanks for joining in, and I guess telling us a rousing story about. The goose and uh, the uh, territorial nature, and it's love of bread. So, 
If you yeah. got his name, his name is Paco. Bird his pictures. Name is Paco. His name is Paco. That's right. Scott has named him Paco. That's correct. So Scott, put the uh, email address in for where they can send photos. Uh, Mr. Dugan down in uh, uh, Australia has video of kookaburras singing in the old gum tree. Mary, Mary, I won't start singing. And Laura Keats as well. So uh, I would love for him to send me a link so we could share those uh, exotic birds, which are not exotic to you because they're where you, you live, Mr. Dugan. But here they are exotic cool birds. The email address is explorealliance at explorescientific.com. I think Scott just put it into the link. He's really good about that. And so today's episode of On the Wing has proved to be an expedition and adventure, as uh, we don't like to have, but every once in a while they come up. Uh, next week we'll have some more birds. Not sure what they are yet, uh, but I've got plenty of them. But again, I've got some from Terry Stanfield who provided us his archive uh, before he died. And I've got lots of birds there uh, that were taken around here. Uh, Mike Wiesner sends us some photos from California, Call, uh, from Arizona. Cole Bernhardt has been great about sending photos from Southern California, but uh, birds from around the country, around the world, uh, most assuredly uh, are interesting to look at, expands our horizon on what birds uh, are and what they look like, the calls, a little bit of their habitat, a great fun. So anyway, on behalf of Scott Roberts over in his office and Paul Newton over in the control room where he has lost control slightly today, but he is mastering it effectively now, and he will figure it out for next week. I'm Kent Martz. I hope you have a great day. And keep on birding. There are feathered friends. Protect them where you can and look at them and enjoy their beauty. Thanks for watching and giving us some of your time today. Goodbye. Thank everybody. you.